Welcome, my friends. It's time for another rope video. In this one, we're, instead of a bowl, we're going to be making a tote. So, big thanks to my subscriber friend that suggested I make some totes. And this is my very first tote. I love it. I had a ball making it, and I can't wait to share it with you. So, let's get started to see how easy it is to make a rope tote. For this project, I'm using up that 100 feet of really thick um, clothesline rope. It's very soft. I've got my bowls ready to dye the rope. I've got some acrylic paint that I already had on hand, three different shades of blue, and I've got some water in the bowls, and I'm just going to dump in some paint. If you want it dark, you add a lot of paint. If you want it light, you use less. So there is my base color. Um, I started and ended with this color. So you'll see that on the, on the rope tote once it's made. Then a lighter blue in the middle and then a very light blue um, in that last bowl. So I've got my paint all mixed up and now it's time to start dyeing the clothesline rope. Now, I also have another tip. If you missed my tip video, go back and check it out. But if you want to save this paint, pour it in a mason jar and put a lid on it. And then you can do several projects with it, which is exactly what I did. So here is the rope. I divided it into thirds and I'm just putting in, in the darker color. That's gonna be the base of the bowl and then the medium blue right next to it and then the light blue and then I did go back later I don't show it on the video but I took about three or four yards and re it in that darker blue and you'll be able to see it in the finished product now I do let this sit on the counter this sat all afternoon usually 30 minutes but I got busy out in the garden, so I just left it on the counter pretty much all day, and it turned out fine. So just let it sit in the water and soak up that color, and then after you've let it soak for a certain amount of time, we are going to um, kind of drain off most of that water paint and then spread it out to dry on a trash bag and then I usually put a fan on it to, to help it to dry a little bit faster. And you can see here I'm just wringing this out getting as much water out as possible and what a beautiful color that turned out and I'm just going to spread it out on this trash bag that's what I use and then I put a fan on it. Now I wash my hands between rinsing out these um, colors because I don't want the color to transfer on the other color. But there is all the rope ready to dry and I did pour that extra paint water in some mason jars for another project. Now I let this dry overnight with the fan and then I roll it into a ball and now we are ready to sew. Now the next day the rope is nice and dry and instead of going around and around and making a bowl, I kind of want to make an oblong. So I measured out six inches and I'm zigzagging between those two pieces of rope. And then I'm going to go and turn the rope around and go just like I would around um, bottom for a bowl, but I am doing an oblong shape. So there it is. That's the start of it, and then now we're going to go around and around making the base of our tote bag. Now this one was six inches to start with, which made a really nice size tote bag. If you wanted a bigger bag, you would make a longer base. Thank you. 
Okay, now this is the base of my tote bag, and I believe it measured um, six inches across, which I thought would be fine. So now it's time to start curving the sides up. So I'm going to lift up the base. I'm setting my zigzag stitch just a little bit wider, and you can see my thumb has got it curled up. And we're going to just go around and around, holding it up. And it's just like a little magic moment. This is going to turn into a tote bag. So I go around and around very carefully watching to make sure I catch both pieces of rope as I'm sewing. Now when the rope changed color, I changed my thread color. So I used the dark thread at the top and bottom, and then my lighter blue thread there in the middle. And this is the bowl completely finished. I used that whole hundred foot. And I went through my fabric stash, and I kind of like this for a lining. It matches all the colors that are in the rope tote. And uh, this is the very first one, so this is like a demo. I just kind of laid it out and decided how much fabric to cut out to make a lining. So I kind of played this by ear. I cut it at a diagonal and then I pinned it and kept playing with it until I made it fit this tote. Now you don't have to line your bag. I just had this material and I thought it would be pretty. So I just kept playing with it till I got it in my mind how I wanted to cover the inside of this tote. All right, after I got it cut out, I pinned it in place and then I put it inside of the tote and just kept playing with it. It was a little big, so I had to keep cutting it down to make it fit. Okay, I just kept playing around with it till I got it to fit. I did put a pocket on the inside and I do go back and trim off all that excess fabric. I just kept playing with it till I made it fit. And there it is in the tote. And I wanted to add some straps, so I took some of the clothesline rope that I had dyed that dark blue. I took four strands, zigzagged those together, and that is going to be my handles. And I also made this shabby tassel. If you'd like a video on that, leave, leave a comment in the description box and I'll make a video. It was really easy to make. And I just pinned everything in place, the handles, the tassel, the lining, and then I went with my sewing machine and zigzagged around the top two times to hold everything in place. Then after it was made, I decided it was very, very soft and I wanted it to be kind of dirt resistant, water resistant. So you know me and my Mod Podge. I coated the bottom and then I just went ahead up the sides with one coat of Mod Podge and I even coated the handles. And it did make for a much stiffer and nicer tote bag. And this is the end product. I love the little shabby tassel. They are so easy and fun to make, and it just adds a little bit of bling to this tote bag, which I'm going to be using when I go out this summer shopping with friends or to the beach. I love the pocket for the iPhone and my glasses, but you can see how easy that was to put together. I love the blue color. And it is it is my new favorite thing to make now are these tote bags. So let me know what you think about this idea. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know if you'd like me to do a video on making the shabby tassels. Those can be used in so many different ways. But I loved this project. Thank you to that subscriber who suggested I make one of these. 
and it's my new fun thing to do. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with others. I really appreciate all the shares. Thank you so much. Have a very blessed and safe day.